Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir, tout le monde. Uh, bienvenue à notre séance, uh, conseil, uh, notre séance régulière du conseil tenue ce soir le 26 avril. Uh, je suis accompagné ce soir par notre conseillère Colleen Feeney, Elizabeth Yulin et Maria Torres et notre conseiller Dino Mazzoni. Aussi, on est uh, rejoint ce soir par notre directrice générale, Maître Raphaël Destasio, uh, notre greffier, Maître Claude Gilbert et notre chargé de communication, Mademoiselle Manon Schalk. Alors, si je peux avoir quelqu'un pour ouvrir la séance, s'il vous plaît. Oui, Monsieur le maire, je propose d'ouvrir la séance. Merci, la conseillère Yulin. Je peux avoir l'appui, s'il vous plaît. Oui, Monsieur le maire, j'appuie la résolution. Merci, le conseiller Mazzoni. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît. Oui, oui, oui. oui. Très bien. Euh, adoption de l'ordre du jour, s'il vous plaît. Merci, M. le maire. Je propose d'adopter l'ordre du jour de la séance ordinaire du 26 avril 2021, tel que présenté. Merci, le conseiller Mattoni. Je peux voir l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Oui, je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère euh, Torres. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît? Oui. 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 Merci. Euh, approbation des process verbaux, s'il vous plaît? Oui, je propose d'approuver les process verbaux de sé des séances du conseil tenu ou date suivante, séance ordinaire du 22 mars 2021, séance spéciale du 8 avril 2021 et séance spéciale du 22 avril 2021. Merci, la conseillère Torres. Je peux voir l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Oui, je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Fini. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît? Oui. Oui. Merci. Just to let everybody know, the uh, obviously the regular council meeting of March 22nd, the special council meeting of April 8th was to deal with a planning advisory, uh, planning advisory committee recommendations to council. And the 22nd of April was to adopt our uh, G, um, gestion des matières résiduelles policy. It's the policy to uh, deal with residual matters. We adopted that policy and that was on Earth Day. So uh, there will be more information available on that. Uh, there's nothing under correspondence or report. Of, uh, I'm going to move right to report of the mayor. Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir à tous. Welcome to our regular council meeting. We will answer questions from residents that had been submitted until 3 p.m. today on any topic. Uh, in the second question period, we will take questions pertaining to the agenda submitted via our website during this meeting. Bienvenue à notre réunion régulière du conseil municipal. Nous répondrons aux questions des résidents soumis jusqu'à 15 heures aujourd'hui sur n'importe quel sujet. Au cours de la deuxième période de questions, nous répondrons aux questions relatives à l'ordre de jour soumis via notre site web lors de cette réunion. I received interventions from residents on both sides of the issue about opening our recreational installations during this third wave, and valid points have been raised on both sides. Suffice it to say that we'll continue to follow, as we have for the whole duration of this pandemic, the recommendations and obligations of the public health authorities. To the users, I hope you continue to follow the rules as laid out by the government, that seem to be changing often, when using these outdoor facilities. To those that have expressed concerns about users not following the rules, I'll remind you that the SPVM is mandated to enforce those rules, and you can report any flagrant non-compliance to them directly. I'd like to bring you up to date finally on a non-pandemic subject council and administration have been elaborating. As part of our continuing upgrade at Davies Park, we are studying the installation of a gazebo in the park. In fact, it will act as a place to rest in the shade and will also act as a permanent stage for the park and you have the plywood stage we normally install. We've mandated a firm to design a structure that represents the town and respects our architectural heritage. In fact, the lead architect is a resident of the town. These plans are being finalized so we can issue a call for tender and see if we can have it built while respecting our budgets. It would be a great addition to the park in the town and will act as a focal point for our recreational facilities on Westminster. And just as a passing note, I'd just like to wish a happy belated birthday to Abby Rosmovitz. So everybody, please stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you very much, merci. Uh, we're gonna move on right away to council's reports and we're gonna start on from seat number one of, with Councillor Dino Mazzoni reporting on matters pertaining to public security and to special projects fundraising. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Bon soirée. Uh, this is going to be a very short and sweet report. We didn't have many uh, serious calls for any reported crimes or whatnot. In fact, the last 
four months, starting from January, inclusive of this month of April, have been very similar. We've had 100 plus nights of curfew. So you can imagine that uh, things have been a little bit uh, tranquil, thankfully. Um, some departmental activity for the month. Uh, we, as I mentioned, did not have uh, any uh, real uh, major incidents or serious crimes to report. The odd person walking a dog after 8 p.m. Uh, since the curfew was put in place last January 9th. Um, our PSOs have resumed enforcing the seasonal no parking restrictions for the street sweeper, which began on April 1st. And as always, uh, PSOs always begin this process with a two-week warning period prior to issuing any fines. So please check the signage on your street to see if there's a sweep sweeper uh, parking restriction. Say that very fast. Um, we're also following up on private landscaper permits and the use of leaf blowers as we are currently permitted uh, to, to, for a two week spring cleanup between the, the weeks of April 15th and May the 1st. Our PSOs have continued focusing on a couple of recurring garbage complaints in the commercial section of the past few months. And this is important because wildlife is attracted to easily accessible garbage. We did issue one ticket to a commercial building for the accumulation of refuse, despite the fact that we had provided a prior warning before issuing this fine. Uh, we issued also a ticket for private tree removal uh, felling that was done without a permit this month as well. Uh, we've handed an invitation letter to every business in our commercial sector in order to inform our, and invite our merchants to participate in our residual waste management police workshop. And finally, we continue to assist building inspection and other departments that are working remotely due to the pandemic. Um, in terms of um, an SPM crime stat, if I'm to throw one at you, we, the SPVM reported one theft from uh, inside of a, a vehicle. There were really no details given on the nature of the crime and it was because it was not reported at also to our PSOs. Uh, we didn't, like I said, we don't have anything else to really report. We did see a, a citizen provided us with some camera footage that showed an individual going from driveway to driveway during the night looking for unlocked doors. Our PSOs have seen the video and have been paying extra special attention uh, on their night patrols. And so far, nothing has been uh, reported stolen or any incident uh, as a result of that. That's really it. There's really not much to report. I hope all of you are well and doing, um, doing um, you know, as best as can be during this very difficult period of time. If you have any questions, we are having a traffic and safety committee co meeting coming up in the next few weeks. And uh, we'll be talking about it in our question period coming up. But if you have any questions that you'd like to have submitted to the committee, don't be shy. Give me a call directly on my cell phone, 514-949-3055. And Mr. Mayor, that's my report. Thank you very much, Councillor Mazzoni. Reporting from seat number two on matters pertaining to communications, recreation, and culture, Councillor Elizabeth Ewan. Thank you very much, and good evening to all of you. Bonsoir. Thank you for joining us tonight, or whenever you're tuning in to watch this. Uh, I'll start with the registration for community center summer programs has begun, just for residents, uh, and there are fewer spots than normal, of course, due to the current uh, regulations. So uh, I'm gonna say that if you'd like to book a spot, you, you'd really better do so soon because they're filling up very quickly. Uh, virtual seniors activities this month included a photographic presentation of Scenic BC, as well as a talk on the history of time. In special events, our annual Cottontail Party was replaced this year by an Easter egg hunt in the park on March 28th. And coming up, there'll be a free online class given by musicologist Craig uh, Morrison on the history of rock and roll. It'll be taking place on May 5th from 7 to 9 p.m. As I said, it's free, and you can call the community center if you want to register. The spring and summer show artist showcase will be hosted online again uh, this session with the, under the theme of un unsung heroes. So if you have any artwork that you'd like to submit, uh, please do so by the deadline of May 15th on the website. We're still awaiting clarification from the government um, about whether exterior pools may open. But if they do give us the okay, which I certainly hope they will, we will be prepared to start at the beginning of June once we get the go ahead. Day camp preparations are underway and our management staff has all been selected and we're still finishing our interviews for the counselors. Uh, it's no surprise that the majority of camper spots are already filled. Uh, so if you want one of the remaining spots, once again, I urge you to do so soon. You go ahead and, and book it as soon as you can. 
We're pleased to announce that uh, we received a grant for over $4,700 from the commemorative, excuse me, commemorative Partnership Program of Veterans Affairs for restoration work on our cenotaph. That's in honor of, oh, excuse me, in honor of our hundredth, its hundredth anniversary. Finally, switching to the communications portfolio, uh, the department's been working mostly as as has been the last number number of months on matters relating to the ever changing COVID directives. Um, also, we have a new town signature that they've worked on, and the residual materials policy document that was announced last Thursday and is now posted on the website. So that's what's going on in this department. Um, and if you have any questions for me uh, that you haven't already asked on, uh, online, you can do so at the second question period after the meeting is finished. Thanks very much. And once again, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Councillor Eulen. Reporting from seat number three on matters pertaining to urban planning, finance, administration, and human resources, Councillor Colleen Feeney. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and bonsoir tout le monde. Um, so I'll start this evening's uh, talk with just quickly on the administration, a few things that are interesting in that department. Um, they have, based on some new recommendations, they have adapted new safety guidelines to have our employees wear specific procedural masks indoors at all times uh, to combat the COVID variants. And they are busy preparing an awareness and training program on cybersecurity for our, our employees, especially since so many of them are working from home. In the finance, uh, a reminder to people, even though the tax bills went out in January, we did postpone the due dates and they are now due. The first installment is due on May the 25th with the second installment due on August the 27th. We highly recommend that you pay electronically. However, if you do pay by checks, we encourage you to send both checks with your, uh, with your payment. Uh, as well in the finance area, pension plan audit began on August the 15th and all is progressing well. The big news, however, is the fact that we have finished the town audit for the uh, year 2020. And um, I'm going to give a very brief, well, presentation of the financial statements from 2020 for you tonight. I'll try not to be heavy on the numbers because the numbers are going to be posted online tomorrow on our website as well. Uh, I will be writing an article uh, about it for next month's informers. So, uh, so I'll just kind of give you more, some of the, the more brief highlights on this. Uh, whew, I don't know how to start. What can I say about this past year is that it's been exceptional in every single way. And that includes that it's been exceptional for our finances as well. Uh, first and foremost, we posted uh, the largest surplus that I have seen in this town uh, of $2.57 million. And although we are definitely pleased with those results, we are aware this is a one-time event, uh, which we'll, we'll likely not see again. Why? Well, there's a few exceptional circumstances that happened this past year. First of all, it was the sale of the library lot. Uh, that brought in an additional $1.6 million to the town's coffers. We don't have many assets to sell. We don't usually sell assets, so that was quite unusual. We're very pleased that we've been able to do that. And in fact, we are going to be, uh, you'll hear later in the meeting, earmarking specifically $1.6 million, the cost, the proceeds of that sale to a special infrastructure uh, fund. The second thing that was unusual is we actually got... <laughs> Quite surprisingly, a grant from the provincial government for $503 to help uh, mitigate the costs, the extra costs and uh, decreased revenue that towns had as a result of COVID-19. So that was another $500,000. Now, if we did not have the 1.6 million and the 500,000, our, uh, without those two items, our operating surplus would have been around $450,000 which is what it kind of has been for the past couple of years. And in fact, that's only about 2.7% of our budget. But it was an extraordinary year and there was many, many ups and downs here. Uh, just give you a little quick picture uh, for our revenues. Our revenues were $533,000 over budget. Of course, 500,000 of that was that grant. 
And in other revenues, there was very much an up and down. Uh, of course, recreation revenues were $513,000 less than expected. And revenues on tickets, and these are tickets given by the SPVM, were also way down over $40,000. Very fortunately, very fortunately, we had a few other items that were higher than normal. The largest one of those, of course, was duties on transfer, which is the proceeds, which is the, the taxes levied after a property is sold. Uh, because of the hot ha uh, housing market, and uh, because we had so many houses over a million dollars sell, that amounted to an additional 418,000 over our budget. That really is uh, unprecedented, but it, came on a very good year when our other revenues, some of the other revenues were way down. So we, uh, that was pretty good. And we also had higher revenues from water tax and from permit fees. And also due to some very good financing on the part of our treasurer and her department, our interest payments were up as well. Uh, on the expense side, uh, again, there was large fluctuations from the budget. Again, the largest fluctuation, the biggest changes were in the recreation department. Those, uh, those um, expenses were way down um, because the programs weren't running as well. Uh, there was uh, five, over $500,000 um, in uh, our remuneration budget that was lower, again, because people weren't hired for these programs. And we were luckily uh, had a pretty good year for snow. So the public works budget was uh, under budget by $76,000, under expenses by $76,000. A lot of that was due to, to snow removal. Uh, we did, however, have some additional expenses in a few other areas. And in particular, we did acquire some capital assets, $182,000 of capital assets out of our operating fund. We like to do this when it is possible. Uh, this is what we call our pay as you go and we can purchase things uh, without incurring debt. This past year, we did some improvements in our parks. We needed improvements on our building, um, got a vehicle, some equipment, et cetera. And as well, we paid uh, down our working fund, which is our own fund that we use to, uh, to borrow from uh, for some of these assets. We paid $344,000 down there. Uh, so that was it. That's basically the, the, the picture. We, um, our total capital assets increased by $641,000. Our total debt increased by $780,000, mainly because we were we um, were financing the project the year uh, earlier for Wolseley and uh, Crestwood. Uh, so our total debt remains at 14.3 million, which is still uh, within, our, uh, within our goals. And all the above strategies really are in line with our strategic financial plan. Uh, before I move on to another thing, I just wanna thank our treasurer, uh, Valentina Trauderon and our director general, um, and all our directors of our departments for, uh, for their excellent budgeting and managing of the expenses. It was not an easy year. Uh, they had to switch gears so many times and uh, we're just very pleased to be able to announce these, these wonderful results here tonight. And as I said, the full details will be on the website and in an article that, that I'll write. Um, okay, a uh, little bit more on the finance. You will see that uh, tonight we will also be uh, passing uh, disbursements of $644,000. I've already said enough numbers. So uh, there's really nothing too unusual this time. There's a whole lot of money, about $280,000 for deductions at source, etc. Garbage, as usual, is a big source of, of, of money, $35,000. The snow cost us $70,000. Uh, and what is unusual this past month is we did have a contract. And um, uh, as has been reported, we will be cutting down, unfortunately, many of our diseased um, ash trees. And we have a contract with a company to, uh, to do this. And that was $46,000 out of our expenditures for this past month. Uh, so those were the major expenditures this past month of where we spent your money. Moving on to urban planning, uh, there was 44 permits issued this past month, mainly for renovation projects and decks, et cetera. Um, the next PAC meeting will be May the 5th and your uh, submissions were due on April the 21st. After that, the next PAC meeting will be May the 26th 
and those submissions are due May 12th. And I wanted to remind residents of two things. First of all, it's a busy time of the year. There's lots of projects coming in. So please try to plan well ahead to ensure that your uh, project can be reviewed uh, in time for, for these upcoming meetings. And also for those of you who might be tuning in for the first time to let you know that uh, since the town offices are closed, you can only apply for these permits online and it's all on our website. Um, the information is there. Finally, on our seniors committee, again, our programs are continuing in terms of our calls and, and picking up groceries for people. Uh, as well, the recreation department continues to post webinars uh, and, uh, and um, often you know, reports them on our calendar. So they're quite interesting, specifically uh, geared to the senior population and often geared to some of the issues that, that seniors could be experiencing right now during the pandemic isolation, et cetera. And so uh, I, I encourage you to take a look um, and to tune into some of those. I also encourage you all, not, not just seniors, everybody, to take a look at the, um, the article that was uh, um, co-authored by Councillor Mazzoni and myself uh, regarding keeping our sidewalks unobstructed. Um, I think it's really important, particularly at this time of the year, to to bring this up to people. There are people walking around, especially now when walking and being outdoors is one of the few things we can do and can do safely. It's really important to, um, to keep the sidewalks clear and, uh, and, 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 and accessible to everybody. So um, on that note, I will say, get out, enjoy yourself and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney. Reporting from seat number four on matters pertaining to the environment, public works and buildings, Councillor Maria Torres. Councillor Torres, can you unmute your mic, please? Yes, thank you. Bonsoir à tous. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening. I'll start with a short report from Public Works. Uh, Public Works was able to start cleaning all the parks and roadways early this spring due to the unseasonable warm weather. Seasonal speed bumps and other traffic calming measures were installed during the month of April. Public Work crews were out cleaning the parks and green spaces throughout the month. And this is in addition, of course, to all the maintenance they do around town and in public buildings. The dock run will be cl closed for three weeks starting today for a variety of cleanup and repair issues that will not only focus on aesthetic repairs, but also installing measures to address the erosion of certain materials in the park that have become problematic. Public Works crew, pro, crew will be out in force in May and probably June, weather permitting, repairing potholes through the, throughout the town. At the end of May, the spring tree planting will begin. And you still have time this week to request a public street tree in front of your home. If you wish so, please uh, contact Public Works uh, right away and uh, you know, they'll, they'll send you a form so you can answer it and, uh, and start the process. Finally, the road surf resurfacing of Avon between Westminster and Ronald Drive will begin in, begin in the next month. Information will be available to residents via e-bulletins and the town website, website as so as it is available. Please don't forget forget to respect all the traffic signage in the town construction zones. Now, moving on to environmental matters, uh, the household hazardous materials will take place uh, during the month of May again. We do not have a date yet, and I do believe the procedure might change a little bit um, as to the location might stay the same, but there's some changes coming up, and that's the reason we don't have all the information. However, I want to encourage you to keep track on either our website or e-bulletins. We'll be announcing it as soon as we can. Uh, meanwhile, if you want to have uh, further information about what materials are accepted or not, <coughs> you can check our website. Um, all this to say that you can start getting all your hazardous materials ready for to be disposed uh, in a responsible manner. Last, <clears throat> sorry, I would like to invite you to check out the new Montreal West Environmental Action Committee Facebook page. 
In this page, the committee will be posting news about all our projects as well as other environmental related issues. And if you have any suggestions, we always uh, we will be very welcome. So that's it for me. If you have any further questions, uh, please um, send me an email. I'm always happy to answer at mtorres at montreal-west.ca. Merci à tous. Stay well. Thanks. Thank you very much, Councillor Torres. And now we're going to move on to the first question period. Um, parce que ce séance est tenue en huis clos, um, et les membres du conseil assistent d'une manière virtuelle conformément à l'arrêté ministériel numéro 20-074 de, de, de le 2 octobre 2020 um, de le ministère de la Santé et des services sociaux. Pour, pour cette raison, les questions ont été soumises via notre site web uh, jusqu'à 3 heures aujourd'hui. Et les questions qui font part de la première période de questions peuvent toucher sur n'importe quel, uh, quel sujet. Alors, on va commencer. First question came in from Jennifer Budd at 193 Wolseley Avenue North. Are you planning on repaving Wolseley North as part of this year's roadworks projects, or at least patching up the many gaps? The state of the road has gotten very bad after this winter, and there are multiple blocks of asphalt sitting loose. Unfortunately, uh, Jennifer Budd, the um, Wolseley North is not part of this year's repaving or re reconstructing as such. Um, this year's reconstruction work is on Fenwick. Uh, but yes, they will be uh, coming to repave problematic areas. In other words, putting patches down to repave particularly problematic areas on those <coughs> as they go all around the town. So I'm sorry, my, I live on the same street you do. Unfortunately, our street's not up yet for, for repave or reconstructing. Thank you very much for your question, Jennifer Budd. Second question comes from uh, Jennifer Melnick at 140 Ballantyne South. Hello, my question is about Meadowbrook Golf Course. There was an article in the news recently about a conservation project that mentioned it is being designated as a green space by the city of Montreal. What does that mean for the golf course? Will this land become a public park? What can council share about the future of this land or development? Uh, best regards, Jennifer. This land unfortunately isn't part of Montreal West, it borders on Montreal West, so we really don't have any say or any inside information. I know that the city of Cote St. Luke uh, that owns the land, or excuse me, that is, has the land on the north side of Cote St. Luke Road. It belongs to Meadowbrook, but it sits in uh, Cote St. Luke territory. They've already uh, zoned the space as green. I think uh, the city of Montreal or the borough of Lachine owns or uh, has the part that sits on the south side of Cote St. Luke Road. And they're, they've done the same. And I know there's like the, the Direction des Grands Parcs et du Verdissement de la Ville de Montréal. They're the ones that look at these projects. They're the ones that are talking about the Grand Parc de l'Ouest. Uh, they're talking about preserving and maintaining accessible more than, I think, over 2,000 hectares of green space on the island. So we don't know anything more than that. There's been talk about them trying to come up with a, a park there, but nothing, uh, nothing has been uh, made concrete yet. So thanks for your question, Jennifer Melnick. Third question comes from Ian Robinson. It's a two-part question. Will council be passing a resolution, excuse me, Ian Robinson at 143 Ballantyne North. Will council be passing a resolution allowing our citizens to vote by, via mail in the upcoming municipal election? And will the council be making a public statement concerning the proposed kilometer tax as suggested by Mayor Plant? The Mayor of Beaconsfield, as you know, has let his views be known. So for this first question about the mail-in ballots, that's something that council will be discussing, whether or not we want to go uh, that route as well. We have until July 1st to pass a resolution. The DGEQ has given us the ability, if we wanted to, to do something like that. We're gaining some more information now. Our employees or the people that will be running the elections for the town will have a, a training session with the uh, DGEQ, and then we'll get some more information then. Like I said, we have until July 1st if you wanted to avail yourselves of that ability. And in terms of uh, the, the, um, the public statement, no, we won't be making a public statement about a, a proposal that some group, uh, the Projet Montréal is making about a kilometer tax. That hasn't come to any kind of fruition yet. And people can make all the comments they want. I prefer to make comments on things that are concrete and that's not even concrete yet. So I won't pass any comment on it. Uh, thank you very much for your question, Mr. Ian Robinson. Uh, the fourth question comes from Ellen Moore, 122 Percival Avenue. Two-part question. 
What does this mean? Guideline one, strive for zero waste, reduce the use of single use plastics. The TNW, which I'm assuming is the town of Montreal West, wishes to further this reflection by considering these products in a global and not individual way. What does that mean? And second part of the questions for guideline two, increase the rate of residual materials diverted from the landfill, develop a material traceability system. Documentation and communication of results is important. Yes, absolutely. Do you do this? How will you communicate what you learn about, for example, plastic bags, cellophane, or rubber bands? So if I can ask Councillor Torres to address the questions, please. Yes, gladly. Um, thank you, Ellen, for asking the questions. Um, I'm glad that um, yeah, you're addressing sometimes it's, uh, it's interesting for other people uh, to, to also to understand if I can shed some light into this matter. Uh, so just to go on to the first one, um, the meaning of what I understand from your question is um, the town of Montreal West wishes to further this reflection by considering these products in a global and not individual way. The way that we make decisions in Montreal West is always in a, in a broader context, which means in a global context and not uh, on individual needs of, of each resident. Also, I do believe this refers because um, as we are developing this action plan for Montreal West, we have to take into consideration the, the, the goal set by the agglomeration of Montreal, Quebec, and Canada. So it is a much bigger context than just the, the, the needs of each individual. In Montreal West, we also have to take into consideration all the sectors, the, the industry, the industrial area, the commercial area, and residential. So this was gonna encompass uh, a lot more than just uh, household to household. For guideline two, um, you wanna know about uh, developing the material uh, traceability and uh, how would we communicate the results? Well, the action plan, um, it is a very important part of the action plan that they develop uh, an educational and public awareness, uh, information education and public awareness campaign. A multitude of tools will be developed to develop uh, to help the population integrate all these good practices in their lifestyle. So yes, we will be developing different uh, systems to communicate, not only how to sort all your uh, residual materials and where they would go and what to do with them, but also what happens once you put them, for example, into recycling. Um, part of the uh, zero waste strategy or the philosophy is to make the producers of objects such as wrapping on the plastic bottles responsible for the ultimate disposal of each one of these products, which means that to ensure and to make, to make sure that, that they are accountable, we do have to uh, uh, find out about the traceability, the, the road to, to the final um, state of the object, basically. So, and this is part of the action plan and this will be communicated with different tools. I hope I answered your question. And if not, you can write, uh, let me know, send me an email. Okay, thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Torres. And thank you for your question, Ellen Moore. Next question comes from Julian, Julian Mazzoni, 49 Parkside. It's a three-part question. One, how come the water fountain pressure in Strathern Park is very low? I know the water line is linked with the play fountain, but is it possible the town can increase the pressure of the drinking fountain instead of people putting their mouth close to the faucet? Question two, how come the town does not give plaques for homes that are over 100 years old? And question three, can the town please fix the light that goes on and off in the path through EBS? Thank you. So for question one, I'm gonna ask Councillor, uh, excuse me, Councillor Torres to answer, please. Yes, hi, Julian. Thank you so much for addressing these two issues. Uh, public works will, uh, will check the fountain pressure and the, and the fountain that you're talking about. However, if I can just give you a little bit of an advice, um, don't put your mouth close to the spout. Try to bring a bottle with you at all times, not a plastic one, one that you can reuse. Uh, but we will check the pressure. Thank you very much. It's a very good point. And if you don't mind, Mr. Uh, Mayor, I would like to answer the question three since it's also related to public works. He's uh, talking about the light at the Elizabeth Valentine School. We have sent it already to public works and uh, we'll be checking the light to ensure that it works properly. 
Thank you very much, Julian. Thank you very much, Councillor Torres. And if I could ask Councillor Feeney to answer the second question about the memorial plaques. Sure, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Julian, for your question. It's a good one. And Council did discuss this some time ago. So as you may know, um, in 1997, it was the centenary, the 100th anniversary of um, the town's incorporation. So as a special project, the town did give commemorative plaques to all the uh, buildings, mainly homes that were around 100 years ago when the town was formed. Those are probably the plaques you have seen. That really was a one time that was really a special thing for our centenary, however. Uh, in the 24 years since then, many more houses, I think, have reached the age of 100. But, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to uh, continue with that program would probably kind of diminish the, the whole idea behind the, the centenary plaques to begin with. So we do not have uh, any plans for extending that program at the moment. But thank you for your question. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Feeney, and thank you for your questions, Julian Mazzoni. Next question comes from uh, Steve Mon, 31 Ainsley Road. He asks, the Easton Development Project is slated to break ground in mid-May and continue for 18 months. Traffic is at this very busy intersection will undoubtedly be strongly affected. Can the town share its plans for how it will deal with the inevitable congestion? The, the impacts of this uh, on the traffic are among the inconveniences that this project's gonna bring. Um, but we're trying to be very proactive with our communications in regard to this, um, to this project. So one of the steps uh, that they have to go through is the demolition of the existing building. So soon there will be a consultative process that's going to be required for us to issue the certificate of authorization for the demolition uh, to let everybody know like what the different phases are that involved in that matter. Uh, in addition, we've already put together a web page specifically to address some of the communication issues involved with this uh, major project in the town. And as for the start date of the work, we can't say that yet. It hasn't been confirmed by the town or the developer. Uh, once the permit application is complete and compliant, it means it has to go through like the planning advisory committee, the demolition committee must follow the steps established in order uh, for the, uh, according to our bylaw, before issuing that permit. And thus, then they can start to confirm about the dates for the construction of the work itself. Okay, so it's a lot of things are up in the air first, but we're going to continue doing as we have. We, we have the information on the website. We'll continue putting out information as it becomes more concrete and more uh, available. Thank you for your question, uh, Mr. Mon. Uh, next question comes from Aubrey Marchant. Two questions. With regards to Fenwick, uh, Fenwick, excuse me, with regards to Fenwick Avenue repairs plan for this year, please inform me of how it was selected as next in line for road work. From my perspective, it is not the worst shape than the disintegrating strip of Brock North. In fact, it appears to have been repaved in recent history. Can you please tell me the last year that Fenwick was repaired? Has the town actively looked at other government grants to help offset costs associated with this work? So I'm gonna answer that, that, that question there first. In terms of how we select the road, it's not just by the road surface and I don't know exactly what date it may have been uh, already repaved at one point, uh, Aubrey, uh, but the reality is, is that we look at, the, or not just us, the, the granting agencies that uh, the Quebec government grants us money to do this work, but we have to abide by the rules. The rules say that we have to look at the road surface and the side and the sidewalks, no question. But more important, we have to look at the pipes underneath. And the pipes that were on Fenwick were very, very problematic. Uh, the whole length of Fenwick is problematic in terms of mostly the sewer system, uh, the sewer system backing up. So we have to make sure that we're addressing this properly. So that's one of the things that we're doing, and that's what moved. Fenwick to the top of the list. That's why Fenwick is being redone this year instead of Brock. And I don't disagree with you. Brock is in pretty crummy shape as well. Uh, but unfortunately, Fenwick, because of the piping, moved up higher in, um, in priority. In terms of the second thing about other, the other government grants, I can ask Councillor Feeney to jump in on that, please. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you for your question. Um, yeah, I, I would like to reassure you that on an ongoing basis, the town is always monitoring the kinds of financial assistance that is available for, uh, for infrastructure projects. Uh, and that is actually also part of our strategic financial plan. So yes, they are always, we're always looking for, for granting possibilities. Thank you for reminding us. We will continue to look. Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney. And the last question from Aubrey Marshall. 
Would the town be interested in participating in or organizing a community outdoor cleanup event, a plogging day? Is the town aware of any areas that need particular attention? People would keep their respective family bubbles and could easily follow COVID rules since the event would be completely outdoors. Uh, Councillor Torres, can I ask you to address the question, please? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Avery. This is a, a wonderful idea. Uh, first of all, it's the first time I think some of us have ever heard of the term plugging day. It's interesting and I love the, 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 the initiative. However, um, our blue color, colors are already taking care of this. According to their collective agreement um, or the our collective agreement, we, we cannot uh, organize ourselves to do such thing. They have to do it on your own. However, um, I think since this is such a wonderful initiative, maybe you want to talk to other groups in Montreal West or other uh, institutions, for example, like the churches or schools and, uh, and see if you can organize something with them. Um, that would be a great. And, and I do have to, to, to share with you um, the feelings about cleaning up as soon as the snow melts because there's so much garbage. I feel like going outside and start doing the same thing myself, but we have to allow the blue colors to do it. And they're doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. Thank you Thanks. very much, Dr. Torres. And as she mentions, like I said, the schools may need some help. The churches may need some help. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that may need some help. So even if the town may not need help short term, maybe some of these other places uh, can use your help. So thanks for the question, it's a valid one. Uh, uh, thank you for your questions, Aubrey Marshall. Uh, next question comes from Kevin McDonald, 28 Fairfield. This is a problem slash possible solution. Talking to the neighbors there mentioned that there has been high activity at the Hodgson basketball court, more than the allowed eight playing at a time, COVID rules. Uh, an online booking website similar to our tennis courts could be the answer. This has been well accepted in well accepted last year and may be permanent. For basketball, only eight players could book and play for the defined period of time. This would give equal opportunity for more to play and feel safer at the same time. Hopefully with this, the park hours would also be respected. Can I ask you to answer that, Councillor Eulin, please? Yes, certainly. Thank you for your question, Kevin. Um... With respect to having an online booking system for something like basketball, uh, we did discuss it and it really isn't feasible. Uh, they have something like that at the tennis court because it's a um, enclosed area, but they have to have staff there uh, or volunteers at all times to make sure that the number of people who've registered uh, are actually the ones showing up. So with an open basketball court the way we have, it's really not feasible to have a member of staff there to be ensuring that the people who signed up are the ones who uh, are presently there. We can, however, have the PSOs uh, drive around and make sure that the, the numbers are being respected for how many people are on the courts and that they're using them within the proper hours. Uh, but beyond that, an online booking system for something like an open basketball court really isn't what we would be looking to do uh, uh, to manage that, that particular issue. It's also worth noting that while sometimes there may be more than eight people on the basketball court, by the COVID rules as they exist currently, they could actually have eight people using half a court and eight people using the other half court. And as long as they were two separate groups, they would still be allowed. So um, I know that there are sometimes uh, infractions going on there and we have told the PSOs that they should be keeping an eye out for that. And you know that's what we'll continue to do. But thank you very much for your question. It's, it's an interesting possibility, but under the circumstances, I don't think it's gonna work for, for that particular facility. Thank you very much, Councillor Yulin. And I just want to uh, clarify, the PSOs are not in any position to be able to force somebody to stop playing or to force somebody to uh, follow the COVID rules. They can suggest, they can educate. The only people that can actually impose the, the uh, following the rules are the SPVM. So like I said, the uh, the PSOs can go by and say, listen, folks, you're you're not respecting the rules. And uh, unfortunately, it kind of stops there. It has to go to the SPVM after that. Thank you for your question, Kevin McDonald. Uh, next question, ça vient de uh, Franck Denis, 3 Fenwick. Bonjour. Un arbre a été abattu par la ville en face de chez moi. J'ai aussi remarqué que d'autres arbres avaient été abattus dans des autres secteurs. Quel est le plan de la ville pour replanter les arbres dans un contexte de réchauffement 
réchauffement climatique de notre ville a-t-elle une plan d'augmentation de la végétation? Merci. Je peux demander à la conseillère Torres d'adresser la, la demande, s'il vous plaît. Oui, merci, Franck. Euh, euh, je suis très contente que vous avez posé cette question. Vous avez raison. Beaucoup de frênes infectés par la grille du frêne ont été, ont été abattus à travers la ville. Et oui, ils seront tout, tous remplacés. Pour répondre à la deuxième question, euh, la ville travaille depuis quelques années à un programme accéléré de plantation d'arbres. Cette année seulement, nous prévoyons de planter de plus de 100 arbres. Euh, merci pour ton, ton intérêt et si tu peux me demander, si tu veux me demander d'autres questions, tu peux me rappeler. Merci beaucoup. Merci, la conseillère Torres, et merci pour votre question, Franck Denis. Uh, next question comes from Mary S. T. at uh, 63 Westminster North. Before I read the question, I just want people to understand, uh, just putting your initials for your last name isn't enough. We need a complete name, a complete address. All right, so I'll answer the question. Uh, I'll, I'll read the question first off. Why aren't there traffic lights at the corner of Sherbrooke and Westminster North and Westminster and Coffee? Students coming in and out of RWA and other pedestrians at the mercy of drivers at the stop sign. Again, I was nearly run, run down. What are we waiting for? We've actually had this area studied extensively uh, by a traffic engineer, not me, not a resident, a, a traffic engineer, who said that imposing or putting in a stoplight at the corner of Sherbrooke and Westminster would actually make the situation worse. Uh, they would make it worse because then cars are waiting longer to cross the track, and that's what's going to increase the amount of uh, illegal or dangerous maneuvers by the cars. So I do understand the frustration, uh, but that's something that the traffic engineer completely steered us away from. By the same token, uh, EXO, the people that are running the tracks or running the trains on the tracks, uh, are making some changes to their uh, accessing the station. And those changes are going to kind of funnel people to be walking on the sidewalk on the west side of Westminster, not on the east side, on the west side of Westminster, to keep them off of the east side. Have them all on the sidewalks on the west side of Westminster. Uh, and that should help alleviate the problems as well. Uh, in terms of Westminster and coffee, uh, those streets are parallel, so I'm not exactly sure if you're talking Westminster and, uh, well, not even, if you're talking Sherbrooke and Elmhurst, maybe that's a street you're concerning with, or if you're talking coffee and Elmhurst, I'm not exactly sure, but both of those, those intersections are in NDG and they're outside our control. Thank you for your questions, Mary S. T on uh, Westminster. Uh, next question comes from Mike Ailey at 62 Ronald Drive. The apartment complex on Brock South in Montreal has bricked up the garage entrance closest to St. Anne de Bellevue Boulevard, which means 100% of all cars and residents of the two apartments buildings must use Ronald for access to their garages. This is unacceptable as the traffic and speeding has increased in Ronald substantially even before the second apartment building was opened. Can the town please follow up with the City of Montreal and or the developers to reopen access from Montreal side? It will reduce traffic on Ronald substantially and was the plan all along. Councillor Mazzoni, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, if you'll indulge me, just to go back to Jennifer Melnick's question at the top about Meadowbrook, sure. I just wanted to put an asterisk that everyone on this council for many years has publicly stated their support to maintaining Meadowbrook as a green space. So I just thought I'd put that as out there. To go to Mr. Ali's question, and thank you for that question, sir. Um, you're right, we, we, it is unacceptable that uh, we would see this uh, breaking up, if you will. And so what we are gonna do is the town will in fact follow up with the developer. We're gonna see what the story is on that. Uh, in terms of your question about this, what you see as being uh, traffic and speeding increasing on Ronald, we have a radar uh, actually planted there. And in fact, for that very reason, we've been monitoring uh, Ronald for, for some time. We are going to download that radar info to verify in fact, whether or not there has been an increase in speeding. And so we'll get back to you on that point. Uh, the only other point I'd like to make is this whole issue specifically of Ronald Drive and the development uh, on, on uh, St. Anne de Bellevue that, and Brock South, that for us has been an important issue and we're monitoring it literally every week our council and our administration is on top of that so rest assured that if in fact there's any merit to what's going on here we will be addressing it thank you mr lee for your question thank you very much councillor mazzoni and thank you for your question michael lee next question comes from janice hamilton 203 valentine 
Avenue North. The St. Pierre River is in imminent danger. The City of Montreal has indicated it must follow the Court of Appeal ruling. It will begin work soon to divert all water that flows onto Meadowbrook from the Tobe Lake Collector. Do you agree that the St. Pierre River has the right to exist, to flow, to be pollution free and to defend itself in court? Will the Town of Montreal pledge work, will the Town of Montreal West pledge to work with the City of Montreal, provincial government and citizens to protect this historic waterway before it is too late? Everyone agrees that the, the first remedy is to protect the, the place from pollutants as a priority. That's been our priority. That's why we've undertaken the work. We undertook two roads last year to fix as many possible cross connections as we came across in the north sector. Our town continues to participate in the solution. Um, as far as for the works that must be built in the short term in Tobe Lake Park, um, that's in the hands of the city of Montreal as the court has ruled. Uh, we've been very open and cooperative with the city of Montreal, and we will continue to do so. Thank you for your question, Janice Hamilton. Uh, Danielle Bouleris at 204 Wolseley North asks, the city of Montreal says it has no choice but to construct a water line to carry all of the water from the Tobe Lake Sewer from the northern boundary of Meadowbrook Golf Course to its southern boundary. This solution is scheduled to begin soon. Have studies been done to find out what impact this could have on the storm sewer systems of Montreal West in the event of intense rainstorms or sudden spring flaws. Excuse me, spring, spring thaws, excuse me. The water studies are cut, carried out by the city of Montreal and they take into effect the, uh, take into account the local effects and the extended network effects, um, the loads on that system. This is an integral part of what the engineers must, must take into account when they design any kind of water infrastructure. We're counting on the city of Montreal to provide us with the details relating to the planning of this work, since it will have an impact on the, the population in Montreal West. The people close by were going to be um, inconvenienced by the work being undertaken uh, and everybody else in general. So we want to make sure that we can put in place uh, measures to decrease the inconveniences that this work will uh, likely cause. So thank you for your question, Danielle Bouleries. Next question comes from Stan Carney, 449 Woosley Avenue South. It's two questions actually. Can you describe in detail the maintenance work being done at the dog run? Can you supply the costs involved in any such work and why the lengthy time work attempt, lengthy timeline for such work? Does the dog run close for other periods of maintenance? If so, please describe the work involved. I'll let you answer these counselor tours and then I'll, I'll ask, I'll uh, read Mr. Carney's second question. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corney. Um, just to let you know, um, yes, this is a job that is um, done every single year. We close the dog park for a couple of weeks or about two a month, and uh, is to do general maintenance or very specific work. Uh, this year, we are replacing uh, the damaged grass, and we also resanding of the, the, the run where the, the dogs are running all the time, that then is to be resanded. The co this costs less than $500 and it is within operation budget for regular maintenance. The closure, the closure is intended to allow, allow long seats to do their job. If an issue to this job, another job that we're <clears throat> almost sure is gonna happen is we're putting a fence on the side of the dog run with the, the Royal West Academy. And it has to do not only to create some privacy, but also to hold on, on to some erosion of materials that it keeps on running on to, their, to the Royal West uh, field. Um, we don't have the cost of this yet, but uh, that's pretty much the work that needs to be done. And as I mentioned, it's done every single year and uh, as a part of regular maintenance of the dog park. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you very much, Councillor Torres. And the second question from Mr. Carney, a previous administration was incapable of resolving a dispute between two neighbors blowing leaves onto each other's properties. So it imposed a leaf blower ban penalizing all. You classified it under the noise and nuisance section. With the advent of newer technology, such as electric battery powered and noise reduction improvements, I see no need for such a ban anymore. The only exemption would be uh, gas powered leaf blowers. Will this administration be prepared to have a serious look at this outdated ban? I would be glad to present my reasons for removal. Uh, without saying yes, uh, we're going to change that. We are in the process now of looking at the uh, leaf blower bylaw. You're absolutely right, Mr. Carney. There are new technologies out there. 
that may mitigate the, the noise and may mitigate the uh, problems caused by the uh, gas motors. It may not mitigate the problems caused by particles being blown into the air, but this is something that we're looking at. We're gonna to look to see what the regla d'or are right now, what the gold standards are in terms of the bylaws that are uh, around the island and in the province. So we are looking at all of this now. So thank you very much for your question, Mr. Carney, your questions, Mr. Carney. Uh, next questions. Next question. Uh, there was two questions asked by Farah Isa at 307 uh, Ronald Drive. In terms of your second question, uh, Mr. Isa or Farah Isa, I'm going to, we're, somebody will reach out to you uh, offline to answer that question. Uh, it, the nature is a little bit something that's not for public. So we'll reach out to you uh, offline for that. Uh, the first question, do I need a permit to change old basement windows for new similar ones? No changes to structure or looks. Thanks. Councillor Feeney, can you address the question, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Farah, for your question. Um, uh, you do. Uh, we always need uh, a permit when you're replacing windows, even if they are the same. And in fact, windows are one of the things that goes to the PAC committee. So well, when you are replacing this window, give yourself enough time to be able to present it to PAC for them to have a look at it. Um, and uh, so that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be able to, to proceed with your, with your work when you want to be doing it. Um, so thank you for your question. Um, and that's ho hopefully I've answered it. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney. And thank you for your question, Farah Isa. Next question comes from Anthony Seminara, 118 Ballantyne North. I would like to request traffic calming measures on Ballantyne North. Many cars use the street to bypass Westminster and the speed limit is not respected. The current speed bumps are ineffective as cars slow down right at them, but speed up significantly in between them. There are a lot of children playing on the street and this is a residential neighborhood street, not a boulevard. Perhaps ballers or large concrete planters or widening the sidewalks at the intersection like Westminster. I feel the situation is urgent and needs to be addressed before there is an avoidable accident. Thanks. Councillor Mazzoni, if you could address the question, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Seminara, for your question. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to have a, a traffic and safety committee meeting in a few weeks, and I'm just going to bring directly your question before that committee, and we'll look at it. For other residents who have comments like Mr. Seminara's, if you go to the website and you go to the public security section of our website, there's a, a way you can fill in a form online, at least to ask, uh, make a request for a traffic calming measure, which is what uh, Mr. Seminara is effectively asking for. And then that will go before uh, certainly our committee and, and even sometimes in the short term before our PSOs who have some very uh, creative solutions. So we'll look at it and Mr. Seminaro will get back to you on that. And I thank you for your question and the concern you've raised. Thank you very much, Councillor Mazzoni. And thank you for your question, Anthony Seminaro. Next question comes from Elizabeth Chartier, 162 Percival. Hi, I was wondering if the Recreation Department could provide some transparency of how the cancellation fees for camps are established. If a resident needs to cancel an activity, they are charged a 20% administration fee even if the activity will not start until some months later. In comparison, all private camps and most municipal camps follow the con consumer protection law that states that a consumer should be fully reimbursed if the service has not yet been provided. Why is the town charging its residents these high penalties that are quite frankly abusive? Thanks for explaining this. Councillor Ewan, please. Yes, thank you for your question, Elizabeth. Um, well, I, I just want to clarify that um, Montreal West is certainly not the only municipality uh, that charges administration fees like this. Hampstead, Code St. Luke, TMR, Kirkland, many other municipalities have the same policies. Um, we do so, uh, as do the other municipalities, because we do incur quite a few fees in advance of providing the service. We have staff that we hire and train we have materials that we purchase. Um, there are other parts of the fees we, we don't get back even if people cancel, like uh, the fees uh, charged by the credit card companies and such. So that the administrative fees uh, essentially are covering the costs that we would otherwise lose uh, if people aren't attending the program. Um, so that's the justification for doing it. And as I said, we're, we're certainly not alone in that many municipalities, uh, neighbors of ours are doing something similar. So I hope you understand that's the rationale for, for the policy. But thank you very much for your question. Thank you very much, Councillor Yulin, and thank you for your question, Elizabeth Chartier. 
Next question comes from uh, Anne McLaughlin, 59 Strather North. In reference to the annual $10 tree giveaway, the array of trees offered to the residents is interesting. However, wouldn't it be nice to also offer the red sugar maple as an option? They are so beautiful in the fall and besides, they are, a they are our national tree, right? Question mark. So I'm gonna pass that on to Councillor Torres, please. Yes, thank you, thank you, Anne. Uh, this is a, a great suggestion. I think we all agree that it is an absolutely gorgeous tree. And um, um, what we'll do is, is um, I will suggest it to public works to include it and um, in, in, the, in the drive. And to let you know that, uh, well, I'd like to point out that we're very proud. This is in the eighth year that we've been running this program very successfully. And um, anyhow, it, it is a wonderful tree and uh, we'll take it into account. We'll, uh, we'll pass it on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Torres. And thank you very much for your question, Anne McLaughlin. Next question comes from Sheila Kramer, 157 Westminster North. At this point in time, it is difficult to know how COVID will affect our summer plans. The plans are going ahead and Sharks Day Camp will be operating out of the Presbyterian Church on Valentine. I spoke to the camp and they inspect an, an enrollment of 50 to 80 campers plus staff. There can be more because of the church's capacity is under 50 people. That sounds like a lot of kids, noise, garbage and cars to an otherwise peaceful corner of the town. What considerations were given to the neighborhood before this project was approved? Thank you. Councillor Feeney, please. Okay. Thank you very much for your question, Sheila. And I know there has been a concern going around. I just want to reiterate that the, the use of private property such as, as this is governed by our zoning bylaw. And where the Presbyterian Church is located is zoned for those types of activities, training activities, indoor and outdoor activities. And so they have rented their premises to the Sharks Day Camp and as long as the Sharks Day Camp is operating an activity which is permitted, um, and, as then, and then if they apply for a permit and pay for it, then basically uh, it, is, it is an activity which can go forward. Um, now, in terms of some of your other concerns, I hope they don't happen, but if they do, we do have our nuisance bylaw, which controls uh, types of things like noise and garbage. And if a problem emerges, we want you to, you know, make sure that our town will intervene according to our, according to our bylaws to make sure that the, uh, these bylaws are respected. Um, at the moment, the church has been informed of its obligations and we are counting on the co their collaboration uh, to ensure compli compliance with our bylaws and with peace with the neighbors. Um, and the town, as I said, is ready to, uh, to intervene in the case that there is a, in case there is a problem. So um, hope you are assured by that. And uh, thank you very much for your question. Thank you very much, Councillor, uh, Councillor Feeney. Uh, next question is from Lynn, oh, I'm sorry. And thank you very much for your question, uh, Sheila Kramer. Next question is from Lynn Doyle at 311 Valentine North. Is there still time to order a tree and could it be other than the three listed? Is no overnight parking enforced during COVID? An unfamiliar parked car parked in front of our house for four days, including a Thursday morning. Now it is parked next door. So I'm gonna ask Councillor uh, Torres to address the first question, please. Well, first of all, uh, thank you very much. I thank you. Um, very happy for this question. Uh, we already have forwarded your request to Public Works and someone will be contacting you so you can fill out the form and then discuss all the details with them. Thank you so much. This is great. I'm happy you won a tree. Thank you very much, Councillor Torres. And for the second question, I could ask the Councillor Mazzoni to Joseph, please. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor and Ms. Doyle. The parking bans are in effect. Despite the pandemic, uh, we have forwarded information on to our public safety team for verification. By the way, just there is the possibility that, in fact, the car that you had mentioned has obtained a valid parking permit. So that may very well be the reason why it's part, been parked uh, where it has been. I will say, though, I do appreciate your uh, diligence and, and being mindful of the cars in, in our neighborhood. And if you see some car that is unfamiliar or perhaps even from a security perspective that may be of concern to you, by all means, don't be shy to raise that issue directly with our PSOs. Thank you for your question. Thank you very much, Councillor Matoni, and thank you for your question, Lynn Doyle. Next question comes from Peter Catalano, 12 Radcliffe. 
digging a hole in front of my lawn to access a broken drain pipe, drain pipe close to the footing of my house. Three weeks ago, Public Works informed me that no permit was required. This is just a necessary repair. Public Security asked for a perm permit. I told him none was required. Comes back, gives me a ticket. This is a five foot hole to repair a pipe. I'm not doing landscaping or any changes. I was told no permit required. Why nobody from city came come and look before giving me a ticket? Uh, Maria, come and look at the hole. If I could ask Councillor uh, Feeney to address the question, please. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Catalana, for your, uh, for your question. Um, first of all, I will clarify that a permit is always needed for excavation works. So that is for sure. Um, secondly, it is the urban planning department who has the responsibility for deciding uh, who, what needs permits and for issuing the permits. So um, the pu public works uh, generally uh, would not be interfering in that, and, and I'm, I'm quite surprised to that they have give, that they did respond to that. Maybe there was some mis misunderstanding there, um, which you know I'm I'm sorry about. Um, not knowing those details, however, I, I think the best thing is if I will contact you offline personally to uh, to follow up on this a little bit more and see if we can get to the bottom of it. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney, and thank you for your question, uh, Peter Catalano. Next question, well, actually three questions come from uh, Luis Chenever, 70 Roxton Crescent. Uh, Dear Maria Torres, we met your team picking up litter on the eastern end of the Hydro-Quebec corridor. They informed us they would be taking on the maintenance of the corridor. We would like to know the extent of their mandate. Does it include dangerous items such as paint? large items such as metal objects and branches. We have been taking care of the litter since 2000 and we empty four garbage cans weekly. We would like to know how we can partner with your team and sign the Friends of Montreal West Hydro Quebec Green. Uh, Councillor Torres, before I read the other question, could, can you uh, answer that please? Yes, uh, uh, hi, Louise. Um, I'm quite surprised that you talk. I don't know what you mean by uh, our team. It cannot be public works since this is private property and we do not do any cleaning up uh, on the Hydro Quebec um, corridor. And um, so I, I don't know who was. We don't have the mandate. And as you know, we have spoken about this before. We do not have the mandate yet to have any responsibilities on this stretch of land. And uh, we don't foresee having that responsibility or mandate for this coming year. It's uh, maybe 2022 or 23. Uh, so um, no, sorry, I cannot uh, tell you if uh, you cannot team up with my team because we don't have any team working on this. And, um, and, and that's it. If you have any other questions regarding this, please contact me. You have my telephone number and my email. Let me know, but um, no, that's not us. We were not cleaning the, the Hydro-Quebec uh, stretch of land there. Thank you very much, Councillor Torres. And the second part of her question was, she would like to schedule a meeting with you. So I'll leave that to you and her to, to confirm that. The third question, I read in your column in the latest April May issue of the Informer in the council communique that the town had another, had, other, had another tree inventory done. Good initiative. I am requesting, in brackets, access to information, an inventory of the town's ash trees. How many were treated in 2020? How many were felled during the winter? Will the remainder be treated this fall? Thank you for your con continued commitment on the improvement of the town's tree canopy by planting more diverse species and increasing their maintenance. Councillor Torres? Yeah, okay, so to address the second question, which it has to do with the proposal that you submitted a few years ago, which is Hydro-Quebec Corridor Collective Gardening Project. Same answer goes, we still do not have mandate over that uh, stretch of land, therefore we cannot talk about any future projects. Once the, we come to agreement with Hydro-Quebec, maybe we can talk about these projects, but so far there is nothing we can discuss since uh, we don't have the, the, the mandate to do anything about it. Um, and then your last question about the, the article, uh, we have forwarded your access for information request to the clerk office. And, uh, and yes, indeed, you're absolutely right. And we're very happy the town is really proactive to ensure the it canopy is preserved. And this is absolutely not only the town, but it's a collective responsibility. 
Um, we did uh, do a, a second um, inventory, which was necessary just to update and find some results from the previous one. And we're doing very well. Our cannabis has improved. Um, we still have a long way to do. And as many people know, they received letters. Uh, this year so far, we have sent 53. Um, telling them that we are pretty much planting a tree and property and the exception has been wonderful for the most part and uh, we will continue doing this. It is something that is absolutely necessary in our town. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your, uh, thank you for answering Councilor Torres and thank you for your questions, Luis Chenever. Um, question from Guylaine Gervais at Two Promenade Courtney. Um, you're, uh, you, are, your, are garage sales allowed despite COVID? And if so, do we need a permit? Thank you. Councillor Mazzoni, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Ms. Gervais. Uh, the answer to that question very simply is no. We're, we're going to take the responsible approach. And for the time being, we don't have any plans to allow for garage sales. Uh, we are in the COVID environment. I will say, though, that there are some great uh, social media groups, one specific to Montreal West, where you can uh, share and give away actually some of your items if you wish to do a cleanup of your home. And it's and I'm going to give a little plug to it because I'm part of that group. It's called the Buy Nothing Montreal West Group. So I'm addicted to it, by the way. Uh, but by by all means, check it out. And there are other ways to kind of, you know, get some of your items out of your home. But uh, garage sales per se, we will not be allowing them for the, for the foreseeable future. Thank you for your question. Thank you very much for your answer, Councillor Torres. Excuse me, Councillor Mazzoni. And thank you for your question, Guylaine Gervais. Uh, last question comes from Peter McLean. This question has been asked and answered, I think, three or four different times. Uh, year after year, I've been asking uh, about, uh, is there anything that can be done about bicycles on the sidewalk? It's getting more difficult for, for me. I'm a senior now. I have to use a cane. I understand kids, but there's adults too. There must be something, a fine of some sorts, proper signs, what designated amounts of fines, the writing on the sidewalk. This is my major concern. Um, Councillor Mattoni, if you could answer the question again, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor. So again, riding bicycles is not permitted on sidewalks, period. As I believe uh, Colleen Feeney, Councillor Feeney mentioned earlier, there was a joint uh, article by myself and her where we speak specifically about that issue. Uh, what we can say to you is that we are sensitized, particularly by the fact that, uh, you know, you've indicated you are a senior. We have a MATA policy in place for the town. Uh, specifically to address concerns uh, to, of seniors in our town. And so we're going to look at perhaps putting in place an awareness campaign, uh, underscoring to our residents really the need to be mindful of, the, of, of keeping those sidewalks free and clear for pedestrians and not to create any obstruction that would cause any security issue for any individual such as yourself and others. Um, and again, if you, you absolutely must have your bike and, and are afraid to you know, bicycle it on Westminster, for example, walk your bike along the, on, on, get off your bike and walk it as you're on the sidewalk. Um, we'll, we'll try to get our PSOs out there as we have, by the way, in the past to, to educate and inform and to tell people about the issue. But again, it, we, they cannot necessarily ticket that infraction. Uh, so we're going to try to sensitize people a little more to this issue. And we do appreciate your question. I don't know if Councillor Feeney wants to weigh in and say anything at, to that comment. Um, no, I, I, I think you've said it all, and it okay. is one of the uh, one of the goals in the action plan of the uh, of the MATA project as well to try to find a safe way for for um, seniors and people with baby carriages and pedestrians and everyone to to cohabit our our streets well. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the awareness campaign is a great idea. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Thank you very much, Councillor Matoni. Thank you, Councillor Feeney. And thank you for your question, Peter McLean. So that's the end of our first question period. We move on to the contracts in the town clerk's office, withdrawal of two cadastral lots from the public domain. So what this is, folks, uh, before we have the motion read out, um, when we have lots that come to, in this particular case, we have lots that belong to the town that were under the, uh, basically they were under the old positioning of the Turcot yard. Um, so those lots now are going to be moved and they're going to, they're actually sitting under the, uh, the new tracks, the new railroad tracks. So what we have to do here is we have to release them from the public domain. So in other words, we tell people that they will no longer be part of the public domain and the city of Montreal West can cede these lots legally to CN or uh, yeah, to CN, excuse me. 
So uh, the first step, as we did even with the library lot, we had to take them out of the public domain and we we're allowed to sell them. So it's the same case here. We're taking out of the public domain and they'll eventually be transferred over to CN. So if I could have somebody move the motion for me, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I move that lots 5904-292 and 5904-296 be withdrawn from the public domain of the municipality for any and all legal intents and purposes. Thank you very much. Councillor Ulan can have a seconder, please. Mr. Mayor, I second the resolution. Thank you very much, Councillor Mazzoni. All in favor, please. Aye. 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 Very much. Um, formation des employés municipaux sur les cyber comportements à risque pour fin d'assurance. Uh, comme vous l'avez constaté, on, on a eu une, une cyberattaque l'année passée et on a, on, nous avons une assurance pour ça. Mais comme c'est une chose qui arrive beaucoup plus souvent et l'assureur a uh, vu qu'il y a eu beaucoup de réclamations par beaucoup de municipalités et beaucoup d'organismes, il nous oblige maintenant d'envoyer de nos employés à faire une, euh, une formation pour l'utilisation sécuritaire de leur euh, ordinateur. So in other words, folks, uh, this, uh, our insurer, we had a cyber attack uh, over a year ago and uh, we had insurance to cover it, but as this is happening much more often now, the insurer is saying, okay, folks, we need you to send your employees to follow a course. So it's a, it's a very simple two or three hour course online where the employees learn safe uh, access ways to get to the internet or whatever to keep their, their computer safe. So this is just a, a resolution to enable us to do this. So je peux avoir quelqu'un pour proposer la résolution, s'il vous plaît. Oui, Monsieur le maire, attendu que conformément à l'article 29.9.1 29 de la loi sur les cités et villes, la ville de Montréal-Ouest a joint l'Union des municipalités du Québec, le UMQ, et son regroupement d'assurance de cyber-risque, regroupement. Attendu que le renouvellement du contrat de regroupement est prévu pour le 1er juillet 2021, Attendu que les demandes de réclamation résultant de cyberattaques sont à la hausse depuis un an, attendu qu'il est de l'intérêt du regroupement et de la municipalité d'obtenir les meilleures conditions de renouvellement d'assurance et de maintenir la volonté de l'assureur actuel d'agir à titre de courtier de regroupement, et finalement, attendu que pour démurer membre du regroupement, il est désormais obligatoire de faire suivre une formation sur les cybercomportements à tous les employés municipaux ayant accès à un ordinateur connecté au réseau de la municipalité ou travaillant sur un ordinateur connecté de la municipalité, que ce soit en télétravail ou dans les locaux de la municipalité. Monsieur le maire, je propose la suivante. Un, que la Ville de Montréal-Ouest procède à l'inscription de tous les employés municipaux ayant accès à un ordinateur, tablette ou autre utile connecté au réseau de la municipalité ou travaillant sur un ordinateur ou autre utile connectant, connecté de la municipalité, que ce soit en télétravail ou dans les locaux de la municipalité, à la formation cybercomportement à risque la sécurité de vos informations dépend d'abord de vos comportements en ligne. C'est un cours qui est dis, euh, une, une, une formation dispensée par l'Académie de transformation numérique de l'Université de Laval en partenariat avec l'UMQ au coût de 12 dollars par participante et par, participant. Et numéro 2, Monsieur le maire, que la Ville fasse le nécessaire afin que la formation soit suivie par les participantes et participants entre le 1er mai et le 31 juillet 2021. Merci, le conseiller Mazzoni. Je peux voir l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Torres. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît? Oui. 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 Merci. Uh, adoption of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, IHRA, Definition of Antisemitism. Whereas on November 1st, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution proclaiming January 27th, the anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz death camp as the International Day of Commemoration in Memory of the Victims of the Holocaust. 
whereas a non-legally binding working definition of anti-Semitism was adopted on May 26, 2016 by the 31 member states of the International Holocaust Remembers Alliance, IHRA, of which Canada is a member. I move that the town of Montreal West adopt the working definition of anti-Semitism adopted by the 31 member states of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, IHRA, on May 26, 2016. Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed towards Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property, toward Jewish, Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. Thank you very much, Councillor Torres. Can I have a seconder, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I second that. Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney. All in favor, please. Aye. 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 Very much. Uh, number 10, approval, excuse me, administration and finances, approval of disbursements from March 18th to April 23rd, 2021. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I move that the list of accounts payable from March 18th to April 23rd, 2021, totaling $664,009.98 be approved and paid as listed. Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney. Can I have a seconder, please? Mr. Mayor, I second that resolution. Thank you very much, Councillor Mazzoni. All in favor, please? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, 10B, Délégation des pouvoirs pour le mois d'avril 2021. Oui, Monsieur le maire, je propose que soient approuvés les rapports du directeur général concernant l'exercice des pouvoirs délégués au vertu du règlement numéro 2005-002 pour le mois d'avril 2021. Merci, la conseillère Torres. Je peux voir l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Oui, je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Yulin. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît? Oui. oui. Uh, C'est retrait du règlement d'empreinte numéro 2021-002. Je peux voir le, le, le motion. Après ça, je vais le décrire, s'il vous plaît. Oui, Monsieur le maire. Uh, je propose que le conseil retire le règlement numéro 2021-002 intitulé « Règlement utilisant une empreinte de 2 millions ». 154 100 dollars pour la réalisation de travaux de réfection de la chaussée et des trottoirs, des conduites d'aqueduc et des conduites d'égouts sanitaires et pluviales et de remplacement des lampadaires sur l'avenue Fenwick, conformément à l'article 564 de la loi sur les cités et villes. Merci, le conseiller Mathieu. Je peux voir l'appui, s'il vous plaît? Je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Fini. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît? Oui. oui. Thank you very much, folks. This is just something we, we're changing. We have to change the amount of the loan bylaw. Uh, we're considering putting in a, a little bit of a some more infrastructure retention basin to help with some of the flooding that causes uh, that's caused by the heavy rains that we've been having a little bit more often. So that extra work may require extra funds. And you'll see later on where we're going to give notice of motion of a modified amount for the loan bylaw for that work to be undertaken on uh, Fenway. Uh, number uh, 10D, budget transfers to the allocated surplus. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move to approve the following budget transfers as per the recommendation of the treasurer from the unallocated surplus, 55-991-00-000 to the allocated surplus account 55 dash 992-00-000, $25,000 for weather contingencies in replacement of winter, winter contingencies under resolution number 2020-1214-006, uh, number two. And secondly, $1,600,000 for infrastructure work. Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney. Can I have a seconder, please? I second that. Thank you very much, Council Yulin. All in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. A number 11, Urban Department, 11A, Site Planning Projects and Architectural Integration Program, SPAIP. 
Okay. Yes, Mr. Mayor. First, I move to acknowledge receipt of the minutes of a meeting held by the Planning Advisory Committee, PAC, on April 21st, 2021. Second, to approve as presented under the SPAIP, the following plans submitted to the meeting in accordance with the recommendations of the PAC as outlined in the minutes. 67 Strathern, readjustment of the front stairs and installation of railings. 99 to 101 Bedbrook, replacement of a basement window in the front facade. 58 Westland, replacement of a window by a patio door in the back facade. 38 Campbell, replacement of the front door. 116 Easton, replacement of the asphalt shingles, fascia, soffits, gutters, flashing and dormers sidewalls. 19 Fenwick, replacement of seven storm windows. 220 to 222 Westminster North, replacement of four basement windows. Third, to approve with conditions under the SPAIP, the following plans submitted to the meeting in accordance with the recommendations of the PAC as outlined in the minutes. 143 Strathern North, replacement of a garage door, uh, sorry, replacement of a garage roof, doors, windows, painting of stucco. 64 Nelson, replacement of the front door and transom above. And fourth, to defer the examination of the following plans to a next meeting of this council in accordance with the recommendations of PAC as outlined in the minutes. 57 Ballantyne North, replacement of the front door and the window above the front door, reconstruction of the canopy over the front entrance, replacement of the front stairs, landing and railings, and addition of two new skylights uh, to the roof. 17 Ballantyne South, demolition of a three season structure in the back and construction of a one story extension. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Feeney can I have a seconder, please. I second that. Thank you very much, Councillor Yulin. All in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Very much, folks. We're going on to deposit of documents in the auditor's report. So we're filing tonight the financial statements for the year 2020. They've been tabled with, count, with council. Councillor Feeney uh, actually gave a, a precy already in the um, in her report. So I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add, Councillor Feeney, or if you took, took it all in your report already. No, no, I just wanted to tie together the motion we just made for the $1.6 million for the infrastructure uh, project that I had mentioned then that that was the proceeds of the library lot sale. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor Feeney. So that, uh, the, the, that document has been deposited. Um, avis de motion, lecture et adoption de règlement. Avis de motion et dépôt de projet de, re, projet de règlement pour un règlement autorisant un emprunt de 2,718 570 dollars pour la réalisation des travaux de réfection de la chaussée des trottoirs, des conduites d'aqueduc et des conduites d'égouts sanitaire et pluvial, et du remplacement des lampadaires sur l'avenue Fenwick. Je donne avis de motion euh, une pro, à une prochaine séance de conseil, un règlement intitulé dans la titre euh, soit adopté, sera adopté. Euh, je donne ce dépôt aujourd'hui et le, le règlement est mis à la disposition de le public. This goes on with what I was saying before, where we retracted the other uh, loan bylaw, and we're replacing it with this one here for a different amount to take care, to take into account uh, the possible retention basin we want to make to handle the overflow in the area. Um, that's it for the that part of the, the um, agenda. I see now that I have not received any questions from, uh, from the public uh, via our online website. Um, so uh, there will be no second question period. Et je peux avoir demandé pour la levée de la séance, s'il vous plaît. Oui, Monsieur le maire, je propose de lever la séance. Merci, la conseillère Yulin. Je peux avoir l'appui, s'il vous plaît. Je l'appuie. Merci, la conseillère Torres. Tout en faveur, s'il vous plaît. Oui. oui. Merci, tout le monde. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending tonight. Um, as I said, this is our uh, regular council meeting. There will be another uh, regular scheduled council meeting towards the end of May. Um, so please keep safe, keep healthy. Um, and do what we can to get through this pandemic together. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Bonsoir. Merci. Good tout night. Bonsoir.